Hey, what's up, guys? I'm country music recording artist Jamison Rogers. Uh, Coach Finney reached out to me a few weeks ago in hopes of doing something special for you seniors since uh, the end of your senior year hasn't gone quite like you wanted it to. So uh, Coach Finney asked me if I would like to do the, the welcome for your graduation, and um, I consider it an honor to be able to do so. Uh, despite this pandemic, you guys are finally getting to the end of your high school careers Closing one chapter in your lives, and uh, you're about to go to college and open the door to your futures. So um, if there's one thing I can say that will that will maybe stick with you, it's uh, never give up on things that you love. Uh, never stop trying to make a positive difference in other people's lives. And uh, last but not least, never stop chasing your dreams. Um, so Jalen, Casey, Darius, Allison, Mackenzie, Zach, Deuce, Ricky, Austin, and Olivia, Welcome to your 2020 Delta Academy High School graduation. Tonight to give our uh, baccalaureate charge is Brother John Hood. Brother John was born in Tupelo, Mississippi. He studied at the Great University of Mississippi and is a graduate of Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. Coach Hood taught and coached at Calvin Academy from 2016 to 2019 and he formerly served as a Pleasant Hill Baptist Church in Calvin City and First Baptist Church in Guntown. He's been the uh, pastor of First Baptist Church in March since December 2018. Without further ado, good job. Good evening. I promise to keep this brief. Uh, don't tell my church members that. But I promise you that they have never uh, said a bad word about any sermon that I preach. They say it's the best 45 minutes of sleep they get every Sunday. <laughs> Appreciate uh, Coach Finney and Mr. Christie and the graduating class of 2020 for this invitation to be here. It is an honor to bring this address. I am grateful for the opportunity to speak for a few moments. And just let me say congratulations to the class of 2020 for making it to this point. In a few moments, you'll be confirmed as graduates of Delta Academy. You put in years of effort and diligent study, and that will be recognized this evening. Many of you not only applied yourselves in the classroom, but also in the athletic arena. You represented your regular family with class and skill. And regardless of the changes of the last few months, you have left your mark on Delta Academy. And we congratulate you for those accomplishments. Now the traditional back to Lord address usually seeks with self-confidence, maybe even a little bit of hope. And, and, and that sense that maybe one student will change their life around. Well, all of us who have graduated know that we've never really listened to these speeches. So I just want to give them a few moments of encouragement, but also challenge them and charge them for the weeks and months ahead. As their journeys continue and they leave the halls of Delta Academy into the wide open world ahead. You will face challenges and hardships that you've never faced before. I do not envy you. Because you will face things that I never faced graduating 15 years ago. 
You will fight things of your parents and grandparents never could imagine. You will meet those challenges head on. After all, you are the coronavirus class of 2020. Your whole commencement has been changed by a global pandemic out of your control. You were upended for your last nine weeks, over to your last semester here. You went to being online students. And wonderful it was, wasn't it? All of your teachers are thinking the same thing. But many more challenges will await you. The world that you are in will test you. It will bend you. It will judge you in every way. Buy a red truck and the world will say you should have blue. Chase your dreams and the world will say get a job. Turn left and the world will scream, you're right. You will be judged by your wealth and status in life. You will make friends and enemies. You will experience triumph and heartache. And the world will always look at you through colored lenses. But let me charge you with this. Dream. Fail. Make mistakes. Celebrate victories and learn from your losses. The world you are entering will judge you based on your value, your worth, your power, your position. Our true greatness is found in giving yourself in sacrifice and service to others. Samuel Pringle, who was the famous preacher within the Salvation Army in the late 19th century, said, The final estimate of men shows that history cares not an iota for the rank or title a man has borne, or the office he has held, but only the quality of his deeds and the character of his mind and heart. The world will look at you for what you are, not who you are. The measure of a person, the measure that you will be, is not in what you accomplish, but who you are in the midst of triumph and success, as well in times of trials and defeat. To that end, you will need a firm foundation to face the challenges ahead. You must be grounded in who you are and what you believe. When the world says, bow down, stand firm. Abraham Lincoln said, be sure you put your feet in the right place, then stand firm. I promise you I'm coming close to you. And not to preach a sermon, but to offer some encouragement. The book of Daniel tells of three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because their faith and strength came from the God above, they were able to stand firm. The world, like Nebuchadnezzar, values itself. And even Nebuchadnezzar erected a statue to pay honor to himself. All the Babylonian world was to fall down and to submit to him. The world, as you know, will try to do the same thing for these graduates. The consequences of failing to submit will be the fury of a fiery furnace. No matter, these men would not submit. They were not concerned about how the world might view them, let alone the fury of the furnace or the anger of a rejected king. When others bowed, they stood firm. They stood firm because their faith was focused. And the focused life of faith led to a newfound fellowship that baffled Nebuchadnezzar and those around him. The COVID class of 2020, no matter the fury that you may face, stand firm in your faith. The challenges and changes you will encounter are made easier in the fellowship of friends and family and the security of your faith. So let me charge you once more. Dream big. Fail. Make mistakes. Hold fast to the joys of triumph. Learn eagerly in times of defeat. Stand firm. May God bless you. May He keep you. May you illuminate your paths and guide you as you embark on a new journey. And no matter where your lives take you, you'll always be ready. historian for the class of 2019-2020. The historian usually talks about who came and who left through the school years of K-3 through 12th grade. However, in my opinion, those facts are not important. What is important are the 10 seniors who are sitting on the stage today. 
As we reflect on the things that have happened through the years, an important question that we should all, we should all ask ourselves is where were you when the world stopped turning? The answer to this question is probably different for many people. But for most of us, we were newborns during the aftermath of 9-11. And a few years after the tragedy of 9-11, we started our journey from K-3 to 12th grade. In K-3 through kindergarten, we learned some of the most important skills that we would use for the rest of our lives. We learned our ABCs, colors, shapes, and how to read and write. These were the days we actually enjoyed going to school. We had playtime and nap time. We hated nap time then, but now we realize we should have taken advantage of all those naps. In kindergarten, we had many adventures. And one of the most hilarious moments is when the teacher wouldn't let a particular student go to the restroom and that particular student use the bathroom in the chair. And that particular student is standing on the stage today. As our preschool years came to an end, we were so excited to have our first graduation and move up into elementary school. In first and third grade, we learned how to count money, read a clock, multiply, and write cursive. Another student and I also learned a lot about the importance of honesty when we were caught cheating in the first grade. We had to write, we will not cheat, at least 500 times, it felt like. Also, a girl in our first grade class decided she wanted to be a cosmetologist and secretly cut mine and Allison's hair during class. As we moved on to second grade, our class minimized to only four students. As much as we hated having such a small class, we also benefited from it by covering a lot of information and only doing schoolwork half the day. As our boring days at Lower Elementary were ending, we were ready to become one of the big kids in elementary school. Fourth through sixth grade was a big adjustment. We went from having one teacher to teaching us everything to having three different teachers and switching classes. Our upper elementary days were filled with playing kickball and dodgeball at PE and break if the teachers decided to let us go outside. We also had silent lunch, which was probably the worst thing ever, considering we like to talk a lot. These were also the years when our athletic days began. The football boys were not ready for what they thought were intense football practices with Mr. Eddie, Mr. Rusty, and Mr. Ike. The basketball girls were always mad because we had to do wall sits and wear this dribbling goggles that Mr. Eric gave us. Those glasses were very fashionable. After the end of our sixth grade year, we were not only excited, but also very scared to move into the high school end of the building. As our junior high years began, there were fun times and not so fun times. Jalen and Darius got into their first fight during Coach Trey's class. Darius, Jalen, and Casey and I all got into arguments during Mr. Todd's class and went to the office almost every single day. This was the first parent meeting our class ever had. These were also the years when our people in our class thought it would be a good idea to date each other. As you can tell, none of those relationships worked out. During our eighth grade year, two of our favorite teachers came to Delta. Coach Lofton and Coach Melton. became our motivators and mentors. And the coaches we loved made it all at the same time. As we made it to ninth grade, our favorite teacher of all the time came to Delta. We did not know for sure if we would like Ms. Tindle, and she didn't know for sure if she would like us either. Also during our ninth grade year, we were able to join Delta Seniors, Journalism, or the varsity sports teams. The ones who chose Delta Seniors had us chosen twice a day. She was often irritated with us, but the one she was most irritated with was Deuce, who one day looked up to see a black stapler flying at him from the circle of the desk. That's not the only comical event that happened that year. Mr. Bob also broke my nose during basketball practice while teaching us how to take charges. It is truly miraculous we survived these years, yet our lives became even more interesting as we moved into high school. 
Our 10th and 11th grade years involved us playing every sport from softball, baseball, football, track, and cheer, even though most people don't consider it a sport. We were all a little nervous to move up into Fetch Mountain's class in 10th grade because we were told we were never going to pass a test. They were right in a way because we definitely failed more than we passed. During our 11th grade year, we had the privilege to set up prom for the seniors. Even though it was a chaotic time because we had to switch locations, it was still one of the most fun things that we did. Another funny thing that happened in our 11th grade year was when Jalen got called by Mr. for watching Kevin Hart. As these two years went by, our class became very close. As Ms. Jenna would say, our class was like brothers and sisters who argued all the time, but also protected each other. At the end of our 11th grade year, we were so ready to watch the seniors graduate because we knew that we were up next. Finally, our senior year is here, the year that is supposed to be one of the best years of our entire lives. The summer before we started our senior year, we had many softball and football practices. Our softball practices consisted of us running when Coach John got mad at us. But it was all worth it just getting to watch Coach John try to show us up and pulling his hand. <laughs> Football practices consisted of many early mornings and intense practices. Then August came, and many of our last first things started, like our last first day of school and our last meet the Raiders. As we began our softball and football seasons, there were some losses and some wins, but the hard work paid off by the football team, making it to the second round of the playoffs, losing by only two points in overtime, and the softball team making it to state. Then basketball season came, and the high school girls won second in the North State after they were told by doubters they would not win another game after Christmas. We were all excited that both boys and girls basketball teams made it to state. As our senior year continued, we had many unforgettable times, like making a hip hop workout video in Ms. Tindall's AMP class, and always talking about food in Coach Mullins' class. Some of the most remarkable events that happened that year, during our senior year, were Allison making All-Stars in softball, Deuce and Jaylen making All-Stars in football, and Casey Darius and I making All-Stars in basketball. We finally made it to spring break and only had one nine weeks left of our senior year. Then came the second week of March. We received the news that we would more than likely not be able to return back to school and finish our senior year. I ask you again, where were you when the world stopped turning? For this class, the class of 2020, we were in our final nine weeks of our senior year. This meant we would not be able to finish baseball season, start track season, or have an athletic banquet. We also had doubts whether we would have a prom, awards day, and graduation. Our days went from being in the classroom with our teachers and friends to sitting in front of our phone or computer, doing homework in Google Classroom, checking Jupiter for updates, and attending online Zoom meetings. Our buzzwords are now coronavirus, quarantine, and social distancing. This has been a tough and uncertain time in our lives, but we are all glad we have Snapchat, TikTok, and Netflix. Overall, we have learned to make adjustments, and now we have completed our reign of terror on Delta Academy. In considering this, we want to say thank you to Coach Finney, Ms. Giss, and Ms. Christie. Your help made it possible for us to have a graduation, even though it's not quite how we expected it to be. To Coach Lofton and Coach Melton, thank you for all your dedication in pushing us to do things to the best of our ability, even if it involved a little extra yelling in the morning. Ms. Cheryl, Ms. Lucy, and Coach John, thank each of you for helping with anything that involves sports and for always being our number one fans. To Ms. Vicki, thank you for always sticking up for us by telling Coach Finney how it is and for trying to shut down Jalen's water bottle selling business. To the teacher, who will always call us the ninth grade class. Ms. Tindall, thank you for being our go-to person for anything and for being our school mom. Also, thank you for our very interesting <laughs> talks and fun laughs, even though some of them had to be done online. To the entire Delta Academy family, thank you for making our years at Delta some of the most fun 
and chaotic time of our lives. Now I want to thank my classmates just as much as you thank terms in our valedictory speech. To my fellow graduates, my compliments. We have done fairly well and we are proud of ourselves. True, there have been a few things during our scholastic career that none of them, that is nothing to brag about. Our class average in math is mentioned only in whispers, and our ability in history is better left, left in a happy state, unquestioned. But we have done a few things very well. We may have no geniuses in our midst. On the other hand, none of us is completely brainless. Our days have not all been peaceful with loving fellowship, but all of our views have been settled without bloodshed. On the whole, we have gotten along together remarkably well, and tonight we are all friends. For this, we are all blessed. To Allison, I'm glad you finally decided you were supposed to be at Delta Academy. Also, I would like to give a special shout out to Deuce for sticking with me the entire 15 years here at Delta. And I also want to say happy birthday to two of my classmates, Ricky Atwood and Jalen Wells. To our families, thank you for supporting us through our years of school and also helping us through these tough times. Without you, many things would not have been possible. Today, as we graduate, we are not only achieving one of the greatest milestones in our lives, but we are also graduating during a world pandemic. Although our two greatest launches into freedom, birth and graduation, occurred during tragedies, we know that our school, family, and friends are amazing, loving, and supportive. We are made to weather the storms of life, and we will overcome the sword. Just give us one more mountain to climb, college. From the class of 2020, thank you all for attending or watching our graduation, and as my daddy would say, the end. I would like to welcome everyone to the night's graduation, but as headmaster, I'd like to say a special thank you to the parents and grandparents of these graduates. I feel like the entire faculty would join me in saying what an honor it has been to work with each of these students throughout the years and help them grow and develop into the promising young people that they are today. I would like to ask everyone here uh, this evening to join in the celebration, but to also preserve the dignity and reverence that this occasion calls for. We have worked to instill this in each of our graduates and hope that the parents and friends will follow their example. It is now my pleasure to recognize the valedictorian and the salutatorian of this year's graduating class. The valedictorian is Jalen Wells. This year's salutatorian goes to Casey Moore. Now I'd like to recognize our honor graduates, members of the 2019-2020 Beta Club. Please stand when your name is called. Ricky Atwood, Deuce Barringer, Zach King, Casey Moore, Darius Rucker, Mackenzie Rushing, Allison Tackett, and Jalen Wells.
Welcome students, administration, friends, and family. I want to start off by saying thank you to our teachers and coaches throughout the years. You all have made such an impact on our lives, whether you realize it or not. You have taught us things that we will carry with us throughout life. We would not be who we are today without your guidance and instruction. I also want to take this time to let every one of my friends here know how much you mean to me and that I will miss you all very much. Thank you to everyone for being the reason Delta Academy has been my second home for the past seven years. When I first came here in sixth grade, I was so nervous, but everyone at Delta was so welcoming, so it all worked out. As the years passed, students came and went, yet we became more and more of a family. I mean, it was inevitable considering how much time we spent together both in and out of school. We have made too many awesome memories to count, from our sixth grade field trip to our seniors to get there. If I could give any advice to the students in the lower grades, it would be do not wish high away high school. It really does fly by like everyone said it would. Get involved, make memories, play sports, participate in spirit trainings, dress up days, and go to as many football games as you can to cheer on your team. Say hi to the new shy kid because you never know how much of a difference it will make to them. Just cherish every moment of high school because you never know when it could be your last time doing the things you never realized you love. I know my classmates and I did not realize when we left high, when we left school for spring break that we would not be coming back to school because of COVID-19. The remainder of our senior year was gone just like that. I know our senior year did not end the way we always imagined it would, but I'm so thankful for the time I did get to spend with my classmates. I'm going to miss you all so much, and I cannot wait to see what God has in store for all of us. I just know we are destined for great things. In the word, words of Winnie the Pooh, how lucky I am to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jalen Wells. It is an honor to stand before you as the Delta Academy's Class of 2020 Valedictorian. Today, I will acknowledge the people met, lessons learned, tears shed, laughter, and memories made during our years as Raiders. Allow me to thank a few people who have, in one way or another, made my achievements promising. I would like to thank God, first and foremost. None of this would be possible without him. I would also like to thank my mom, Tafonza Wells. All of my accomplishments are not only mine, but also yours. Without her hard work, continuous encouragement, and sacrifices, I would not be standing before you today. Thank you for being a listening ear and always believing in me. I'm forever grateful for you not only saying I love you, but putting your words in action. To all the parents who have provided transportation, welcoming into their homes, and giving words of advice and encouragement. Thank you. You have enriched me in my life in more ways than one. Your kindness will forever be remembered. I love you all. To my mentors, my sincerest gratitude for helping me become a better person. We don't become productive students without numerous investments from a lot of people in the school community. The awesome teachers of Delta Academy have taught us how to be self-motivated, active learners, and productive, logical thinkers. To Ms. Tindall, Ms. Lucy, Coach Nelson, Ms. Christie, Coach Lofton, Mr. Todd, Ms. Chisholm, and Ms. Sibley, thank you for helping me go past my comfort zones and becoming an inspiration when I needed it most. To Coach Brown, Coach Tackett, Brother John, Coach Jeremy, Coach Lofton, and Coach Nelson. Thank you for supporting and investing so much time in me. The countless days away from your families and lives outside of school did not go unnoticed. It has been an honor to call each of you coach. You've always made sure our team achieved success, not only on the field, but off the field, on the court, and off the court. 
I will never forget the brotherhood formed, followed by so many others. To Ms. Giz, there are not enough words to express how grateful I am for you. You have been our class's rock the entire same year. No matter the day or the hour, we were a priority. I want to personally thank you for being more than my guidance counselor. You've invested so many hours in the molding of a goofy 12-year-old kid into a productive member of this community. Your endless motivation and support will never be forgotten. I love you. To Ms. Vicky, your sincere conversations, laughter, and support are appreciated. Every morning, no matter what time I made it to this school, you were the first person I had to see. I also want to thank Ms. Beverly for always being there for everyone and showing through words and actions how much she really cared. To Coach Finney, I thank you for your constant hard work and dedication in moving our school forward. I appreciate you for believing in me and providing countless hours of encouragement. All of the conversations and support has contributed to my leadership qualities today. Your kindness has meant a lot. To all of my friends and classmates, thank you very much for the bonds formed over the years. We have spent many days wandering the halls of this great school. We have become a family. We have learned, laughed, loved, gotten into trouble, and most of all, matured together. Thank you for making my years at Delta memorable ones. Six years ago, I walked into Delta Academy for the first time. I remember it like it was yesterday. As a new student, I was nervous, scared, anxious, and excited at the same time. I met eight of my current classmates that year as a seventh grader. Little did I know they would have a huge impact on my life. The first person met in class was Darius. There was never a dull moment with his sense of humor. We spent a lot of time laughing and joking, and this caused us to have a lasting relationship with Coach Finney in the school office. I also remember meeting Deuce my seventh grade year. Our friendship grew over the years. He became someone who proved to be there when needed for absolutely anything. That year, I also remember meeting Ricky. He didn't engage in any conversations, but he was a pretty cool kid. Ricky has always been a classmate that everyone got along with. He and I are the youngest in our class, and also share the same birthdays, which is today. Casey and Mackenzie are the only two girls in our class I met in seventh grade. They've always been pretty cool and smart. We've grown to, we've grown to be great friends. Our ninth grade year, Liv and Allison joined our class. Our friendships have grown over the years. Liv and I have been classmates and friends since kindergarten. Austin joined our class during the 10th grade. He has always been very cool, funny, and straightforward with everyone. Last year, we all met the last addition to our class. Zach bonded with everyone. He is very smart, and there is no more to go on in his presence, and we are blessed to have him in our class. The class of 2020 is exceptional. We've created memories our senior year that will carry us throughout our lives. In August, our year began with a senior party at Gumbo Flats, followed by Meet the Raiders, a football jamboree, Friday Night Lights, and softball games. In September, we had the revealing of our senior football games before our game. The seniors were also given a fun day in Memphis, Tennessee. In October, we had our last football homecoming, senior night, go in the dark pep rally, college tour day, and fall festival. During the month of November, senior football players were blindfolded and surprised by our moms during the pep rally game. All seniors also participated in the last Veterans Day program. At the end of the month, football season ended and basketball season began. In December, Deuce and I were selected to represent Delta in the MAS All-Star Game in Jackson, Mississippi. Delta Raiders basketball celebrated home and away victories. As we approached the holidays, the Delta singers performed at local churches, nursing homes, and our schools spread Christmas cheer. In January, Delta Raiders basketball began the new year celebrating even more victories. During the month of February, Raiders were recognized with parents on our senior night. That month, both teams secured a spot in the district and state tournaments. Our 
Delta girls basketball team placed second in North State. The Delta boys basketball team placed third in North State. In March, Darius, Casey, and McKenzie represented Delta at the MIS All-Star Basketball Game in Jackson, Mississippi. Our baseball season then began. Little did we know that sports in our school year would be cut short the last semester. COVID-19, also known as coronavirus, affected and ended so many lives near and far. Orders were issued for our country, state, and county. Our nation's health and safety became top priority. I never could have imagined all school buildings being closed in the academic year and they were online classes. The changes have been challenging and frustrating. I miss being with my friends and our Delta family. We look forward to participating in our last baseball and track season. We also look forward to attending our senior prom, sports banquet, and awards day. As I spent many days reflecting and in constant prayer, my frustrations began to fade away. I began to thank God for keeping my family, my friends, my teachers, and my classmates safe. I also thank God for allowing us to participate in one of the most memorable occasions of life, which we are here today. Inky Johnson said, play the hand you're dealt, like it's the one you've always wanted. As we walk out of the gym today, with our diplomas in hand, we will no longer be high school students. As the summer ends, we will face more responsibilities, learn new lessons, and set new goals. Before you can do that, however, you need a vision or a dream. Over the next few months, you may be enrolled at a college or a trade school. You may be working full time. No matter what your vision is for the future, you can be successful with dedication and focus that you have learned while here at Delta Academy. We, the class of 2020, are a motivating force of uniqueness and creativity. We will push boundaries to make this world a better place in small ways. Always remember where you came from and remain focused on where you're going. Congratulations, Delta Academy, class of 2020, and may God bless each of you. In music, Zach King and Jalen Lewis. In math, Jalen Lewis. In Beta Club, Casey Moore. In Science, Jalen Wills. In history, Jalen Wills. In English, Casey Moore. And in journalism, Olivia McWilliams.
The James P. Graber Memorial Scholarship was established at Delta Academy in the memory of James P. Graber by his family to assist and encourage students to complete their college education. The recipient of the James P. Graber Memorial Scholarship this year is Jalen Wells. It is my honor to present the Lewis A. Graber Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship was established at Delta Academy in the memory of Lewis A. Graber. Also by his family to assist and encourage students to complete their college education. The recipient of the Lewis A. Graber Memorial Scholarship this year is Zach Keene. It's my privilege to present to you the Lomax B. Lamb Awards. The Lomax B. Lamb Math Award is given to the student with the highest average in Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. The recipient of the Lomax B. Lamb Math Award is Jalen Wells. The Lomax B. Lamb English Award is given to the student with the highest average in English for the past four years. The recipient of the Lomax B. Lamb English Award is Casey Moore. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to present the Joanne and William King Self Memorial Scholarship this year. This award is made possible by the friends and family of Mr. and Ms. Self as a memorial to them. This scholarship is given annually to an outstanding student who best exemplifies the qualities, qualities of character, kindness, and generosity of the late Mr. and Ms. Self. The awards committee has chosen the recipient this year for recognition because of the recipient's scholastic achievement, the esteem in which the recipient is held by fellow students and teachers, and for the demonstrated qualities of honesty, sincerity, loyalty, and courtesy. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to announce to you that the Joanne and William King Self Memorial Scholarship is awarded this year to Casey Moore. It's my distinct privilege tonight to present the Lillian Graham Carson Memorial Scholarship, made possible by the friends and family of Graham Carson as a memorial to her. Graham, the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Robert A. Carson, Jr., was a 2005 graduate of Delta Academy where she loved her fellow students, the faculty, and patrons. She demonstrated her endless willingness to help all who needed her help and was admired for her relentless commitment to excellence. This scholarship is given each year to a graduating senior and the selection committee finds has demonstrated the qualities of character, determination, dedication, and leadership which were evident in Graham's life. This year, the scholarship is a testament to Graham's continued positive influence at Delta Academy in our community, as well as her permanent place in our hearts. And it is my honor to announce that the 2020 Lillian Graham Carson Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Deuce Barron. Cullen County Rotary Club works with Delta Interact Club throughout the year to promote leadership, character, and respect. Members of the Interact Club join Rotarians at their weekly luncheon and interact with members and tell, about, uh, tell everybody about what's going on at Delta. Rotary works with Interact students in any way to help make the community a better place. The, the Rotary motto is service above self, and we believe that the following, uh, believe that following this motto will help you succeed in life. It is my pleasure to present this year's scholarship to a student who has proven leadership skills and will succeed at the next level. The Rotary Scholarship goes to Jalen Wills. The Junior Auxiliary of Clarksdale is a service organization that exists to serve and assist underprivileged children in Quitman and Coahoma County. Each year, we award $1,000 scholarships to students from each school in Coahoma County and Quitman County. 
Students must submit an essay explaining how their future career will involve children and why they feel led to choose that field of study. The essay is graded by junior, auxiliary, junior auxiliary members and a winner is selected from each school. On behalf of the Junior Auxiliary of Clarksdale, I'm pleased to announce the Delta Academy recipient of the $1,000 scholarship is Allison Tackett. The accounting firm of Thomas E. Clayton Jr. in March has awarded a deserving senior a scholarship for many years now. As an alumni himself, Thomas believes that investing in a student's education is important. This scholarship goes to a student who excelled in the classroom, specifically in their accounting class. At their office, they believe the knowledge of basic accounting will help you succeed in anything you choose to do in life. It is my pleasure to present this year's Thomas E. Clayton Jr. scholarship to Zach King. The Marietta Rutledge Scholarship was created in honor of Miss Marietta Rutledge by the late Dean Spratman, who was a student of Miss Rutledge's at Walnut High School. This scholarship is given to a student who is interested in science-related studies. I'm privileged to award the Marietta Rutledge Scholarship this year to Ricky Atwood. The Delta Academy Alumni Association remains a strong supporter of Delta in many ways, not only in our local alumni, but also many friends who have moved away from a strong tie to the school that gave them their spark. We hope to instill this loyalty and dedication in all our graduates here tonight. The alumni scholarship goes to a senior with family ties to the Delta Academy Alumni Association. It is my pleasure to present this scholarship to Allison Tackett. The Spradlin Family Scholarship was established by Mr. and Mrs. Scott Spradlin of Lambert. This scholarship will be awarded to a student attending Delta State University or Mississippi State University and majoring in a health or science related field. This scholarship will be awarded after the completion of their third year of studies with a minimum of a 3.0 GPA. This year's recipient of the Spradlin Family Scholarship is Olivia McWilliams. The Spratton and Wright Softball Scholarship was established in memory of Mr. Scott Spratton. This scholarship is awarded to the softball athlete that has demonstrated leadership on and off the field. I'm privileged to award the Spratton and Wright Softball Scholarship to Casey Moore. Now it is time to recognize the college and university scholarships. Jalen Wells. The Lucky Day Scholarship at the University of Mississippi. The Academic Merit Scholarship at the University of Mississippi. The Valedictorian Scholarship at the University of Mississippi. And the SGA President Scholarship at the University of Mississippi. Deuce Barringer. Presidential Scholarship, Northwest Community College, and the Graver Scholarship, Northwest Community College. Darius Rucker. 
Leadership Scholarship, Northwest Community College, and the Gregor Scholarship, Northwest Community College. Allison Tackett. Leadership Scholarship, Northwest Community College, and the Gregor Scholarship, Northwest Community College. Casey Moore. The 1848 Scholarship at the University of Mississippi. The Academic Merit Scholarship at the University of Mississippi. The Salutatorian Scholarship at the University of Mississippi. And the Girls State Scholarship at the Great University of Mississippi. Ricky Atwood. The Presidential Scholarship Northwest Community College and the Gregor Scholarship, Northwest Community College. <laughs> Zach Keen. Presidential Scholarship, Northwest Community College and the Gregor Scholarship, Northwest Mississippi Community College. Mackenzie Rushing. The Girls State Scholarship and the CFK Foundation Board of Directors Scholarship at the College of the Florida Keys. The Senior Beta Club is an academic service organization here at Delta Academy. The Beta Club sponsors service projects throughout the year. The Beta Club is honoring a senior who is not only an outstanding academic student, but a compassionate young person as well. Congratulations to the 2019-2020 Beta Club Scholarship winner, Allison Tackett. Justin Howard Shields Memorial Scholarship was formerly known as the Delta Singer Scholarship. Justin was a member of the 1989 graduating class of Delta Academy and was active in all areas while at Delta. Each year, this award is presented at graduation to the graduating Delta Singer who best exemplifies the qualities of character of Justin Shields. Justin's outstanding personality was demonstrated in his positive attitude toward life and in his uplifting and cheerful spirit. His devotion to the Delta Singers was evident in every performance. The winners of this year's Justin Howard Shields Memorial Scholarship have been active members of Delta Singers and have demonstrated those qualities mentioned before. The recipients are presented with a monetary award and the recipient's name will be added to the plaque which is kept in the Delta Singer room here at Delta Government. It is my pleasure to announce that this year's Justin Howard Shields Memorial Scholarship selections are Darius Rucker, Mackenzie Rushing, and Allison Tackett. The Twilight Gifts Scholarship was created in honor of Ms. Twilight Gifts by Delta Academy uh, by the class of 2019. This scholarship is given to a student who shows a dedication in helping others and displays a joyful attitude in everyday life. 
This student is one who is grateful for what God has given them and works to make the world a better place for others. This student also empowers others and truly tries to lead rather than follow. These are all traits that Ms. Gist values deeply. The 2019-2020 Twilight Gist Scholarship recipient is Deuce Barron. By the power vested in me, by the Board of Directors of Delta Academy, I hereby certify that these students have met all graduation requirements as prescribed by the Mid-South Association of Independent Schools, Delta Academy, and the State Department of Education. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of 2020. Now it's time to receive the diplomas. Jalen Marquise Lewis Wells with highest honors. <laughs> Casey Denise Moore with second highest honors. Richard Scott Atwood with honors. Dyson Henry Barringer, Jr. with honors. Zachary Chase King with honors. <laughs> Olivia Hope McWilliams. Austin Brett Miller. <laughs> Darius Marquise Rucker. Carmen McKenzie Rushing with honors.
Jocelyn Page Tackett with honors. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I present the class of 2020. Before I give the benediction, I want to address something I forgot to earlier. Uh, when I get through with the prayer, I'm going to leave these guys out. Everybody in the bleachers stand on both sides and only the parents on the floor. Okay. Uh, law enforcement guys right here, thank you to Quitman County Sheriff's Department for being here. They will escort you out. Uh, so when the seniors get through, get through throwing their caps up, they'll, they'll exit the building, and then these guys will escort you out. The bleachers will go first, and then they'll get you out on the floor. Okay? Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you with a thankful heart for all these students who are graduating tonight. I thank you for giving each of these students the talent, ability, and self-discipline required for this milestone. I'm grateful to you for providing the teachers, mentors, coaches, and counselors who have taught, nurtured, and challenged these students along the way. As these students become young adults, help them to learn the secret of dependence on you. I pray that these students look forward to their futures with hope. I pray that these I pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. Never give up on things that you love. Uh, never stop trying to make a positive difference in other people's lives. And uh, last but not least, never stop chasing your dreams. <laughs>